In this lesson, we're going to look at acceleration. So acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So in the last lesson, we looked at velocity. So velocity is the change, the rate of change of position uh, with respect to time. And now we're looking at the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So to get the acceleration function, we can take the derivative of the velocity function. So let's look at this example where we have a motorcycle traveling. And we want to look at uh, what the slope of the graph tells us in terms of being positive, negative, uh, whether that slope is increasing or decreasing over each interval and then uh, look at how that affects the acceleration, which is the change in the slope of the tangent to the graph. <clears throat> so first of all, we just want to look at the slope between all these intervals and just deciding whether it's positive or negative. So if I look at the segment from 0 to A, I see that the slope is positive. From A to B, it's still positive. From B to C, it's negative. C to D, it's negative. D to E, it's a horizontal line, so it has a slope of 0. And then E to F, it is, again, negative. And then the velocity is the uh, change in position in terms of time. And so you're really just looking at, does it have a positive slope or a negative slope? If we drew a tangent line between 0 and A, that would have a positive slope. If we drew a tangent line between A and B, it would also have a positive slope. If we now draw a tangent line to B to C, it now has a negative slope. C to D would be negative. D to E stays as 0, and then E to F has a negative slope. So we're looking at the tangent or the velocity of each segment. Where's my eraser? There it is. OK, and then finally, we want to look at acceleration. So acceleration, we're, we're basically looking at, in each segment, the slope of that tangent line. Is that slope of that tangent line getting steeper or less steep? So if I go from 0 to A and I draw some tangent lines, that tangent line would be getting steeper <coughs> as I go from 0 to A. When I look at A to B, the tangent line would be getting less steep. It would start here, and then it would be getting less steep. So that means the acceleration is negative. If I look from B to C, it is also negative because it's getting more negative, right? If that was negative 2, that would be negative 4, that would be negative 6, and so on. So it's getting more negative as I go from B to E or B to C. And then as I go from C to D, it's getting more positive. So think of this as maybe negative 2, negative 1, and 0. So that gets more positive. Uh, D to E is still 0. And then E to F, it's getting more negative as it gets steeper downward. And then we want to look at whether it's speeding up or slowing down. So, and I'll look at this on the next page. Let's look at the next page first. When the signs are the same, the motorcycle is speeding up. So here, velocity is positive, velocity, acceleration is positive. It is speeding up in this interval. Here, velocity is positive, acceleration is negative. It is slowing down. So think of it as going, turning a corner, right? I speed up to get to here, but then as I approach B, I have to slow down. So that is why we are slowing down in this interval. And then um, two negatives, it's going to be speeding up, signs are the same. And then it's going to slow down, signs are different. So again, thinking here, it's speeding up as we go to B to C, but then as I get to D, I need to slow down. D is just 0. We're just st um, still there. And then at the last part, we're speeding up. Signs are the same. We're speeding up. So 
So a common mistake is thinking that um, a, article, a particle is speeding up when the acceleration is positive and slowing down when it's negative. That makes sense, but keep in mind that speed increases when velocity and acceleration have the same sign. And speed decreases when velocity and acceleration have opposite signs. So, for example, speed increases when a car going forward speeds up or a car going backward slows down. And increase decreases when a car going forward slows down and a car going backward speeds up. So, thinking about that, so always keep that in mind. If the signs, if the velocity and acceleration have the same sign, it's speeding up. When a velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, it's slowing down. So here we have a particle and it is moving in a straight line. So it's going forward and backwards. And the distance is given um, S of t, the displacement is given as t to the power of 3 minus 12t squared plus 36t. So we want to sketch a graph Okay, so I'm just going to line this up here for my velocity. So this is displacement or position, and then this is velocity. So where the graph turns or the horizontal, the tangent is a horizontal line, this is where velocity is zero, right? This is where velocity is zero. The tangent has a slope of zero. So I'm going to put my values in here, kind of line it up. So at 2 and 6, it is at 0. So I can put those here. What does the slope look like before 2? It's got an increasing slope or a positive slope. Then it has a decreasing slope or a negative slope. And then it has an increasing slope or a positive slope. And we could also find the velocity equation by taking the derivative of s of t, just to confirm, and then we can set that equal to 0. I'll factor out the 3, and then factor that. And we can confirm that it does indeed have values of time 2 and 6 seconds is where it the velocity is 0. So that just confirms it. Then we'll do the acceleration. So we'll line that up here. So the acceleration is going to have um, a value of 0 where the velocity is 0. Right here, we're not either accelerating or decelerating. We've got a value at 4. So we're going to line that up here at 4. That is where the acceleration is 0. Before that, we are have a negative velocity. And after that, we have a positive velocity. So it would look like that. And again, we can confirm with our acceleration. Um, our acceleration function would be the derivative of the velocity. So 6t minus 24. If we set that equal to 0, we would confirm that acceleration is 0 at t is 4. So those are our graphs of the velocity and acceleration function. So now we need to determine when is the particle speeding up and when is it slowing down. So I'm going to make a table between 0 and 2 and then 2 and 4 and then 4 and 6 because that's where the uh, position and velocity are changing. So let's I think the first 8 seconds We'll just go to, so from 0 to 2, I can see that the velocity is above the, the x-axis, so it's positive. Between 2 and 4, it goes negative. Between 4 and 6, it's negative below the x-axis. And then after 6, it's above the x-axis. Uh, between 0 and 2, it's below the x-axis, so it's negative. Between 2 and 4, it is negative. Between 4 and 6, it is now above the x-axis, so it's positive, and then 6 to 8. Also look at direction. I can see it's going forward 
from 0 to 2, it's going backwards from 2 to 4, and then from 4 to 6, and then it's going forward from 6 to 8. So questions? We want to sketch a graph of the velocity function, sketch a graph of the acceleration function, and then determine where it's speeding up and slowing. We have a table here, the intervals that we want to check. So the intervals that we want to check are, write these intervals in here. So we're going to check uh, 0 to 2. I'm putting a square bracket at 0 because it's included, but 2 is not. Then we're going to check from 2 to 4. Then we're going to check from 4 to 6. And then we're going to check from 6, I believe the question says, 8. Okay, so looking at the velocity from 0 to 2. So it's positive in this interval, negative, negative, and positive. And then the acceleration, it's positive. So it's negative to there, and it's positive to there. So now we want to look at where is the signs the same and where are the signs different. So in 0 to 2, the signs are different, which means it's slowing down. From 2 to 4, the signs are the same, so it's speeding up. Between 4 and 6, the signs are different, so it's slowing down. And then 6 to 8, the signs are the same, so it's speeding up. Okay, and so if you want to include that in the table as well, you could say slowing down and it's moving forward. Then it moves backwards, continues to move backwards from 4 to 6, and then at 6 it starts to move forward again. Okay, so here's an example where we'll do all of that in this question. Okay, so we have a particle moving in a vertical line, so up or down. The displacement equation is given. You want to determine the velocity and acceleration functions first. So let's find those. And note that time is greater than zero because time cannot be negative. Okay, so the first derivative is the velocity function. And then the second derivative is the acceleration function. Okay, part B says, when is the a particle moving up or down? So we're going to use the velocity function um, to determine when is it stopped. So we'll set that equal to zero. And then we'll factor, there's a common three, so we'll factor that out. And then we'll factor this quadratic. So we can see it stopped at 2 seconds and at 4 seconds. So I'm going to make an interval table. Um, let's see if I can move this up here. So we're going to check from 0 to 2, 2 to 4, and then greater than 4. Put in our factors and then we'll check the signs of the in these intervals. So 3 is always positive, negative, negative, so that makes it positive, so it's moving up. Negative, so it's moving down. And then positive, so it's moving up. So it's moving up um, between 0 and 2, and also greater than 4, and then it's moving down between 2 and 4. Okay, uh, C says find the distance it travels between 0 and 6 seconds. So. I'm going to make another table just to organize my information. You don't have to make a table, but I like to be organized. So I'm checking at 0, 2, 4, and 6 its distance, because I know it turns at 2 and 4. 
I'm going to find the displacement at those values and then I'm going to figure out the distance that it's traveled. So 0, when I put in 2, I got 20. When I put in 4, I got 16. And when I put in 6, I got 36. So the distance in the first 2 seconds was 20 meters forward. Then it went backwards 4 meters. And then it went forward 20 meters. So the total distance, we take the absolute value, because distance is always positive. So it's traveled 44 meters in that 6 seconds. Okay, part D says graph the position, velocity, and acceleration functions for the interval 0 to 6. And then we, we need to figure out when is the particle speeding up or slowing down. So I'm just going to do this on another page. Or maybe not. We'll just continue this down here. Okay, so I'm going to draw my position graph first. So this is displacement. I want to go to 6 seconds. And the height goes up to 36. So I'll just go by 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Should be able to fit it on there. Okay, so I'm going to Start at 0, 0. At 2 seconds, it's at 20 meters. At 4 seconds, it's down to 16, approximately there. And at 6 seconds, it's up here at 36. So my graph looks something like this. Then I'll draw the velocity right below it. So I know the Velocity is 0 at 2 seconds, and again at 4. So at 2 seconds it's 0, at 4 seconds it's 0. This is my velocity function. Uh, I have a positive slope to 2, so it's above. I have a negative slope between 2 and 4, so it's below. And then I have a positive slope up after to after 4, so it's above. And then we'll do the acceleration below this one. So I can see the velocity is 0 here, where it turns. So we'll line that up at 3. And you could find these values um, using your equations that you found earlier. So I know acceleration was uh, 6t minus 18. So we'll just set that equal to 0. And we can see that, yes, indeed, acceleration is 0 at 3 seconds. So it has a negative velocity or negative acceleration before that, and then a positive after. And then that's what the graph looks like. And then finally, we want to know where is it speeding up or slowing down. So we're going to make an interval table. Intervals of importance are 0 to 2, 2 to 3, because that's where it changes, 3 to 4, and 4 to 6. So I'm going to draw my interval here. So we want to start at 0, go to 2. We're going to go from 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and then 4 to 6. Those are the intervals that we want to check. We want to look at the sign on the velocity, the sign on the acceleration, and then we can determine the motion looking at the sign. So if I look at my graph here, I can see from 0 to 2, velocity is positive. From 2 to 3, it's negative. From 3 to 4, it's negative. And 4 to 6, it's positive. I can see my acceleration from the graph is negative below 3, positive above 3. Where the signs are different, it's slowing down. Where the signs are the same, it's speeding up. Uh, slowing down, and then speeding up. And I can confirm that with my graph. I can see that as I, from 0 to 2, as I approach this turning point, I'm going to have to slow down. Then I speed up to here. 
and then I slow down to get to that turning point and then I speed up and I'm moving forward to two, backwards to four and forwards after. So I could say I'm moving forward and then I'm going backwards from two to four and then I'm going forward. 